Exactly. So um, I want to tell you a little bit about the history of the land that we're on. Um, the town dump literally really was across 11th Street from where we are, from where these very fancy, right where those very fancy houses are being built. That was the town dump. And this land had a very interesting history because when the circus came to town, this is where the elephants hung out. <laughs> so we're sitting on top of, you know, decades of elephant poop um, <laughs> is what we're sitting right here. And then um, the river is, is over there, not very far. And apparently this was a meeting place for native, native uh, troops. Uh, groups, native tribes, native groups. Um, and uh, so this is a, it, it kind of has a very interesting karma, this land with, you know, trash, elephants, and sort of, you know, indigenous ceremonies. Um, so anyway, um, yeah. So are there any questions? Question. Do you have a question, Cameron? I do, I do. Uh, I guess it's kind of related to the purpose thing. Mm -hmm. I think through a lot of my life, I've had problems with sort of crafting narratives and delusions about how the future will be or like where I'll be or something else will be in the future. So I guess my question is like, how can you have healthy aspirations without falling into delusion? That's a wonderful question. Thank you. You are not the only person who crafts narratives, but not many people notice that their narrators are maybe not reliable. So thank you for that question. Um, you know, Charlie talked about purpose, but, and often we talk about meaning, you know, what meaning does our life have? But no meaning is great meaning. No purpose is great purpose. So if we have a purpose, I'm going to, you know, fix this thing. I'm going to create, I'm going to become this thing. If we have this kind of purpose, um, then we sort of become trapped. Now, of course, you know, I'm going to make dinner, of course. You know, yeah, please make dinner, right? I'm going to write a book, please write a book. I'm going to fix this car, please fix this car. But when we give it a kind of, of psychic weight, um, and then that becomes like the thing that we depend on, the thing that we identify with, the thing that, you know, then we have a problem. You just pointed to something very important. And, you know, Charlie talked about maybe all human beings will disappear, but the, the planet, the universe will still go on. So our minds are, they're very limited. They're very limited. So hold your narrative lightly. We all need a narrative at some point, at any point. Right, right now, the narrative is I'm talking and you're listening, right? That's the narrative and we're playing along with it, right? People aren't jumping up and shouting and doing things. Um, so we need narratives to function, but hold them lightly. Understand that they're provisional. That's, that's the key. If you hold on to a narrative really tightly, then you have a problem because you become stuck and then you can't let the universe in. So just hold it lightly, okay? And I can tell you, I'm a lot older than you and I can tell you, you have no idea what you'll be doing in 10 years or even five. We all think we do, but none of us know. So that's very important too. So thank you for your question. Are there any other questions? Yes. Okay, so I was um, thinking about, um, you know, you have the situation, relationship, function. Mm -hmm. And when I think of birth and death in those terms, then because everything, I mean, the situation, relationship and function isn't 
just for humans. It's 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 every everything all everything encompasses it. So even when you're when you're born or when you're dead, you still have a situation, you still have a relationship, and you still have a function. It changes because your form's different, but that would still be there. And so therefore you don't really are never born and you are never die. It's just your, your form changes. And so your situation, your relationship and your function changes, which I know because you put it in words, there's gotta be more to it than that. But if you could speak about that, I, you know. There's less, not more. So Liz, for people who are relatively new, Liz is referring to, my teacher used to say, you need to perceive your correct situation, and correct doesn't mean right or wrong, it means as it actually is. Perceive your correct situation, perceive your relationship, by which he means your relationship to this situation, and then your function in that situation. So if you see someone drowning, that's situation you perceive and you know how to swim you so that's your relationship to the situation then you dive in and you save them if you see someone drowning and you don't know how to swim then your relationship is different then you have to find someone else who can help so that's what liz is referring to um liz have you ever seen someone being born Seen what? Seen someone being born. Have you ever seen that? Uh, not in person, only okay. in a... We have a, a retired midwife here <laughs> who's also a teacher in the school. Um, and she can tell you that when a baby is being born, it's not thinking any of this stuff. She goes, wah, you know, like that, if the baby's lucky. Also, um, even, you know, babies die right away sometimes, right? So death is not reserved for people like me, okay? Um, so yeah, so, and when somebody dies, have you ever seen somebody die? Yes. Yeah, yes. and they just die. That's what happens. Suddenly they're not breathing anymore. That's it, just, they stopped. So we don't have to add on to that. Don't add anything to it. No life, no death has a different meaning. But every living creature is born. And as far as we know, every living creature dies. And when they're born, they're just simply born. When they die, they just simply die. That's it. Okay? Thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes. Uh, so, Charlie was talking about Earth Day, mm -hmm. and I was noticing the other day, I was explaining somebody here about the uh, meaning of, of the gesture oh, yeah and all our it seems like all our buddhist statues and pictures they all have the uh, earth touching gesture can you all see that see that hand there okay now continue so i just wonder if you would mind explaining that maybe a little bit of the story behind the earth. Yeah, I don't want to explain anything, but I'll be happy to tell the story. So <laughs> this is about, this is about um, Buddha waking up, Buddha's enlightenment. Um, so Buddha, you know, he did all these arduous practices with these various teachers, and he attained higher and higher and higher states. And he realized this is not what it's about. Because his big question is, why is there suffering? why is there suffering so that was his big question and you know higher and higher states or deeper and deeper states or delusory and delusory states whatever you want to call them that's not going to answer that question 
So um, he went out by himself, sat under a tree. Some people say six days, some people say six years. And he sat and he sat and he sat. And then one day he saw the morning star. But before he saw the morning star, the night before he saw the morning star, the demon Mara sent his host of acolytes after him, you know, armies throwing spears. And then the Buddha would turn the spears into flowers. Remember, he had all these psychic states that he was capable of. And beautiful women would appear in seductive poses. And the Buddha would just ignore him, ignore them. And on and on and on, you know, demons would appear to frighten the Buddha, but the Buddha, you know, would not be frightened. But this was getting a little much for him, all of this stuff being thrown at him. And so what he did is, and you can see the gesture, oh, this flipping, this flipping things. Anyway, you can see the gesture. Um, the, uh, the, Buddha, um, the Buddha put his hand down you know, put his hand down, put his, what are you doing? Put his hand down, it's being weird. Okay, never mind. He put his hand down to touch the earth. That's what he did. He just put his hand down and touched the earth. And then the earth gave him the strength to not be overcome by the sub-demons that the big demon Mara was sending to him. So that's the earth-touching mudra. And that was a very important part. Thank you for bringing this up, because we do have Earth Day, and we do have this wonderful summit that Charlie was lucky enough to go to. I'd hoped to go to some of it, but I wasn't able to. But there is the video. Um, so yeah, so there is this, in the very origin of Buddhism, in the origin story of Buddhism, there is this connection to the earth. It's not about heaven. I mean, there are heavens and there are hells, and they're all temporary. You know, the hell of bright swords, I and mean, they have these wonderful names. Um, but, you know, but there is this gesture, there is this connection to earth that's central to the, the founding's documents of Buddhism. So thank you very much, Todd, for bringing that up. Yeah. Yeah, if you're ever in trouble, just touch the earth. If you can find any. I mean, you know, we're, we have a floor here, but touch the floor because the floor is touching the, the air, which is touching the basement, which is, well, we don't have a basement, which is touching the concrete, which is touching the earth. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So, I think the answer is no, but I'm going to ask. You were talking about touching the floor. And in common interviews, one of our, like, Don't talk about it. For maybe a minute? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. People have to find some things on their, on their own. OK, thank you. Yeah. See, we have secrets. <laughs> <laughs> I will talk about Kongan interviews a little bit. So we have, because we have some new people here. Um, we have this in uh, Japan, it's called koans. It comes from China where it's called a kongan, and we call it kongan, it's Korean style. Um, and these are these questions that you're asked. Um, like a monk asked the master, uh, Jojo, does a dog have Buddha nature? And Jojo, instead of saying yes or whatever, he said, Mu, which means no. And the thing is that Buddha said all things have Buddha nature, and Jodhu said a monk, dog does not have Buddha nature. And so this sets up a kind of conundrum. So you might be asked, does a dog have Buddha nature? Or you might be asked, what is Mu, or whatever. So we have these little stories, and then there are questions that come out of these stories, and then there are commentaries, and so on and so forth. So Kongan interviews is you come in and you're asked a question. And um, it's a process that everyone who does it has to go through on their own. We don't talk about it with each other. Um, you don't say, hey, I passed this comment, or you don't say, what, what, what's a good answer, or you know, whatever. <laughs> um, it's something you, it's what it is, it's a process in which you're 
mind and your karma appears continuously. And it's taking away, if somebody gives you any kind of hint or any kind of direction, then they're not making it possible for you to go through this process. And it's very, very important to give people the room to go through this process and not take it away from them. And um, so that's why I responded the way I did. Um, and uh, Kongan interviews are also very wonderful because everybody hates them. <laughs> I mean, there you are, you're in front of this teacher who, you know, has some kind of title like, you know, Rebecca's a Jito Popsinem and Stan and I are Zen masters or whatever, you know, we have these stupid titles. And so you think, oh, this person has a title, you know, and, and, um, and you know, they, they get to decide, you know, it's not a discussion where you say, well, what do you think? Well, I don't know. I think, you know, it's like they either approve or don't approve of what you said. And so it's a really kind of like, you know, uncomfortable position to be in. Plus the questions are, you know, pretty, uh, pretty not standard, or whether the answers are pretty not standard. <laughs> the answers are, are totally, like if someone asks you, does the dog have good or nature, ordinarily you'd say yes, or you'd say no, and maybe you give reasons. But if you try that, I'll, I'll give you that much of a hint. If someone says, does the dog have good or nature, and you say yes, the teacher will not approve. And you say no, the teacher will not approve. Because the standard way that we use language and the standard way that we think of things, Collins is trying to cut through that. It's trying to absolutely cut through that. So the, all the answers, you know, from the minute you started talking when you were two years old, you were encouraged to use language a certain way and think a certain way and, you know, and I don't mean think like opinions, but like the forms of your thought, the way you were thinking, you know, it was supposed to be a certain way. You know, you have objects and actions and they're different from each other, right? You know, all these kinds of things that are so embedded in us. And Kangans are trying to cut through that. So it's really, really hard. So most of the time, you, your, your response is not approved. And that's really uncomfortable. And then you start thinking, you know, what's wrong with me? I used to be an A-plus student or, you know, or, you know, I was never a good student. I, I know I'll never get it. So you have all this negative thinking about yourself that comes up. But it has nowhere to go because there are no consequences to cons. You know, nobody's going to give you a raise because of it. Nobody's going to fire you because of it. You know, your, your beloved will not leave you. The person you like will not start loving you. You know, your kids won't be nicer to you. Your kids won't be meaner to you. You know, it doesn't go on your permanent record. Remember in school, you had a permanent record in K-12. It doesn't go on your permanent record. You don't get a prize for it. You know, nobody yells at you. It's just you're stuck there with your feelings of inadequacy and they have no place to go. And then after a while you realize, oh, maybe I don't have to be so attached to my feelings of inadequacy. And then they stop controlling you a little bit. And also you want the teacher's approval. Everybody wants the teacher's approval, right? You know? So you want the teacher's approval. You want the teacher's approval. And after a while you realize wanting the teacher's approval is not gonna get you the teacher's approval. So again, this desire, you know, the, the five, Poisons, you know, um, money, sex, sleep. Um, what's the, la the last one is fame, which means wanting to be food. liked. Food, yeah. Money, sex, uh, sleep, food, and wanting to be liked. So this wanting to be liked is something that you stop being so attached to. And then after a while, it's just, let's do the work. Let's do the work. And that mind is wonderful. But you have to go through all this other self-hatred and, and feeling somebody doesn't approve of you and wanting them to approve of you. You have to go through all this other stuff in order to get there. And if someone short, short circuits the process, they're not helping you at all. There's a temple, supposedly there's a temple in Japan where you know when the monks would have to go for their interviews with the teacher and um, it had you know this wooden post where they'd grab and the, the head of the, you know, the zendo would have to pull them off. And so they're like gouges in the wood from their nails. <laughs> I mean, I, it doesn't really make sense, but <laughs> that's sort of how a lot of people, you know, approach it. But, you know, a lot of people here do it regularly. 
and they do it for a reason. Um, so it's a wonderful practice. It really is a wonderful practice, and it's wonderful because it's so hard, and because it awakens this stuff in, in us, but this stuff has nowhere to go. We can't, there's no narrative you can fit it into. That's the thing. And bring back to the first question. There's no narrative you can fit it into. It's just there. And then after a while, its power over you begins to dissolve. So, yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing, but <laughs> it's not fun. Okay, so, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you for your question that I never answered, yeah. Okay, are there any other questions? We're kind of out of time. So thank you, everybody, for your practice. I will make